Welcome back to Nintendo Treehouse Live. Um, I'm here with my great friends, Kendra and Rich. Hey, uh, we're actually here to bring back uh, Ever Oasis. Uh, I don't know if you guys were able to catch it. Last year, we did a segment on this when it was still in development. And uh, it's been coming along really nicely. So um, we're actually really happy to show you some more footage. So Kendra, take us away. Awesome. All right, so here we are. Um, I am actually inside my room. Yeah, there we are. Um, and I'm playing as a female character, which we haven't shown yet. Uh, there she is. Um, but anyway, so this is an action-adventure RPG um, developed by Grezzo. And um, it's a very unique game, and I personally really love it. And I'm excited to show you guys a bunch of new stuff that we haven't shown yet. But first, I need to change my outfit because I feel like it. <laughs> um, so um, actually, the, the turban and the clothing that I'm wearing doesn't affect my stats, but my weapons and accessories do. Um, so you can you can swap out how your character looks and you know a, as freely as you want. Anyway, um, so I, I'm outside my little treehouse now, and this is part of the main oasis. And I'm just cleaning up shop and also collecting some items. This character right here is called a circa. Um, there are four different tribes. So the main character is a seedling. We've got the circa, which are kind of these big uh, scorpion-looking dudes. We've got lagora, which are um, sort of like squirrel rabbit types. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got the Drock, which are um, these lizard characters. And each of those three tribes, oh my gosh, and we've got the newts. Please don't forget the newts. Hey, come here. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Oh, I love hey. little trill. Yeah, and, and the newts actually, so the newts serve a function within the oasis where they kind of flood in and they will um, buy up wares from the various bloom booths, which is what you're seeing here. Um, so I have this oasis. I'm the chief of the oasis. Um, I have residents that can move in, and then they build um, seedling residents will build these bloom booths that they that they then um, I stock the wares. Um, residents come in and buy things from the bloom booths, and um, then I get duodems uh, from them. Sorry, I'm like multitasking here. There's a lot so, going on and okay. a lot to explain. Yeah. So what's going on here is you've got your oasis, and you're growing your oasis by bringing in these seedlings. Mm -hmm. And then the seedlings open up shops, and then the newts come in and spend all their cash at the shops, and the shops get bigger. But you're the one stocking all the shops over yeah. and over again. Yeah, and, and other, other people can... Um, I do want to tackle a special request. Thank you for asking. <laughs> um, yeah, other other residents can also buy things, but the but the newts are, are known to be loaded, so they just like come in and just spend all this money, and it's it's great. It's nice. it's great for the economy here. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so I just picked up a side quest from this Bloom Booth um, shop owner. So, what I really want to focus on showing everybody um, today is the depth of this game because there's a lot to it. Um, Right now, I'm showing you a little bit of the Oasis and kind of the management that goes on here. Um, I'm able to level up my Oasis. I'm able to level up my Bloom Booths, um, level up characters, obviously. And another thing I'm able to do later on in the game is I have this super cool dude who helps me um, organize things. And I am actually going to send out basically an expedition team. I'm just going to send them here. I, so I can choose which area I want to send them out into. And then I can send them to either get monster spoils or materials, um, both of which are very useful for both the bloom booths and I have a garden. Um, but I'm kind of getting ahead of myself because, like I said, there's there's a lot. <laughs> so um, right now you're, sent, you're picking a team of adventurers to go off and basically go on adventures on their own while you're doing your adventure as well. Exactly. Um, so it's really nice because once you start getting a lot of um, characters, uh, you're, you're able to send out multiple teams and they can be, you're kind of like double tasking, right? Mm -hmm. So like you're out doing this stuff, and then they're out um, getting monster spoils or whatever you want. Um, and then they come back and then you can, you know, continue to make your oasis flourish. Uh, really quickly, I'm just going to run around a little bit. Oh, hi, dude. Hey, so this is a new character who just came in to visit my oasis today. Um, He's yeah, a book hi. Junkie. He likes hi, books. I like he that. Likes, I know. I, he reminds me of you, Rich. <laughs> um, and he he really likes my oasis because I have a bookshop already. Um, I just so happen to have uh, grown that bloom booth. So now he's gonna actually move in. Nice. Okay, so he came here because you have a bloom booth that's a bookstore, and he's really psyched about books. And he says, "All right, you've got this cool thing. I want to live in this cool place that has cool stuff." Yep, exactly. Oh, I love that um, visual. Yeah. So, 
Awesome. So he's so I can now level up my oasis, but I'm gonna do that later because what I really want to do right now is actually show to you guys um, something we have not shown before, which is one of three hieroglyph labyrinths. Um, so the hieroglyph labyrinths are side content. Um, I've picked up a side quest, and I'm going to see if I can actually knock out the side quest while I'm inside the Hieroglyph Labyrinth. Um, but basically, these labyrinths are um, they're, they're loaded with different puzzles, um, and you can, make, you can scale the difficulty actually by um, choosing specific slabs. The slabs you get as you're playing through the game, um, you'll unlock various treasures. I keep not knowing which screen. Like, do I look down or do I look up? I, OK. <laughs> I, I think I'll look down for now, because this is closer to my face. <laughs> um, so I am actually choosing, um, I'm not going to make it crazy difficult, because just, just for the sake of expediting this, um, but I want everybody to know that if you are looking for a serious challenge, you go out, you get, um, you get yourself some gold slabs, and you, you stick a bunch of gold slabs in there. Um, these are generated based upon the slabs that you place. So um, again, it's, it's scaled to whatever difficulty you want. Um, and you go in here, you'll fight monsters. A, a really cool thing is um, you, you kind of never know what you're going to get, because it's going to be different each time. Completely random. Yeah, yeah, it's randomized. Um, I could totally see myself like finding a cool labyrinth and then sharing the slabs that I use to generate that labyrinth with somebody else and seeing what they get from that combination of, uh, of slabs. Yeah, you get different user experiences, and then you get to tell each other, like, oh, this is what happened with me. Did you get that? Exactly. Um, so OK, we're already kind of getting into the labyrinth. I really quickly want to just give a little bit of a backstory, because I forgot to do that at the beginning. <laughs> um, basically, I am the main character here. Um, my my older brother was um, attacked by this this fell creature known as Chaos. Um, it's, it's done away with all the oases throughout the desert. So the desert actually used to be nothing but oases. Um, anyway, it's a desert now, and I teamed up with this water spirit named Esna, and we created the oasis that I was in. And we're kind of trying to restore the desert to its uh, grandeur that it, you know, once had. Um, but By anyway, expanding it, and it's looking pretty good too. What we just saw earlier. Yeah, exactly. Um, but so here I am in the first hieroglyph labyrinth room, and each room is going to be different. There are colored doors, and those correspond to what I can expect in the following room. However, each labyrinth, those colors are going to um, correlate to different things. So, red so I have to figure it out as I go. Right. Red will mean something here, but the next time you go into a dungeon, red will mean something different. Yeah, but it yeah. means the same thing within the dungeon. So every time in this dungeon you hit a red door or whatever, you'll know that that's always going to be this one type of room. Exactly. So in this room, there are two treasure chests. One of them contains treasure. I got the treasure, which is awesome. Nice. I'm stoked. But if I had chosen the other one, which vanished, um, it actually would have given me a monster, and then all the treasure would have disappeared. <laughs> so it's a guessing game. Obviously, you're hoping, no bueno. You're hoping you guess right. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, gosh, I'm looking at the far away screen again. I need to look down. Uh. OK, so <laughs> next room. OK, so this one has switches. Um, which, which one do you guys? What do you guys think? I mm. like left. I like left, too. You yeah, like left. left. We're le lefties. You're lefties? Are you lefties? No, I'm actually no, righty. No. Oh, that's OK. Oh, whoa. Nope. OK, so that was, that was wrong, you guys. Thanks a lot. <laughs> but now I get to show off the battle system a little bit. I wanted to um, see this. Sorry. Think, yeah, this is just the more exciting switch to a fold. It's true. I always so. like bringing people into trouble. It's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> it's exciting. Yay. Oh, and look at that. I actually just got one of the two of the quest items that I needed. So as you noticed, I actually switched over, and I'm playing as this Circa guy now. Um, and I can, I can rapidly change between characters, um, which is really nice for ba battle, because um, we'll, we'll get into some more in-depth battles later. Um, but basically, different weapons are strong against uh, different monsters. Yeah. And so there is a fair bit of strategy involved, and you want to um, you know, you want to be smart about how you're doing it. Um, we'll be seeing those more of those monsters later on. But the, uh, I love that a lot of the monsters are like hybrid versions of things that are kind of familiar to us, like those aliguanas. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and here, um, I can choose the color of the door. And if I'm starting to figure out what the colors correlate to, then um, obviously. You'll know which, what's going to be the next room. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to choose green because, because, because oh, that's I feel cool. like So it. once you know what 
a color means, you can then shape what this room is going to be by picking the right, by, by picking the color that you want. Exactly. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Okay. So this is um, a room with monsters. This chaos chest is gonna come here, man. Come here. Face your destiny. Um, oh, wow. And the thing with the chaos chest is that it will continually spawn monsters. Um, until I destroy the chest itself, but I can't destroy the chest itself until it comes back. Come back. The <laughs> chest keeps just popping around the room. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, it'll pop up in different areas, and I have to... Um, but so we've seen we've seen a room with switches. We've seen the treasure chest room. Now we're in this um, room that spawns monsters perpetually. Okay, so um, green means perpetual monsters in this dungeon. Yes, correct. And, um, and again, um, these monsters are, you know, not too terribly challenging, but that's because of the slabs that I placed at the beginning of the labyrinth. I can make it more difficult if I so choose. And by, by using those slabs, like, you don't lose them. You can always reuse them again when you choose to mm -hmm. do another sequence. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. This room. I'm going to go harvest some stuff. So as I'm out in the labyrinth and, and out in the desert in general, um, it's really uh, wise to to harvest everything you see um, because you'll use it in your garden. You'll use it, um, you know, in your oasis in different ways. Um, and so it's just like, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you take the time to cut down all the cacti? Oh, that looks bad. Okay, so we oh, we've got some mini bosses here, um, and they're super cute. But I gotta I gotta take them out or they'll take me out. So now, one thing to note about this is. Uh, these are all like the, the native creatures ah, of this ah. land, uh, but the chaos has turned them all evil. So you'll notice that when Kindra defeats these guys, they don't die. They're gonna... Return to their original form. Yeah, yeah, yeah they've been corrupted by the chaos. Um, let's play as Mira a little bit. Oh, she's ouch. I just think it's super cute when you do beat them because they, they shrink back down to their like normal docile forms. And they scurry off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I watched this one explode or something. Yeah. Oh, there he is. OK, oh. the cute, oh, tiny and one. And he runs off. Um, so oh, he, man, look at her. She's just like, ooh, she's tired. But I don't know if I, I think I want to save my heals because so there was a mini boss. And at the end of each um, labyrinth, there's a main boss. Mm -hmm. And so I think I'm just going to like let her suffer a little bit. <laughs> um, she'll be all right. She just needs to walk it off. Um, <laughs> so this is an exit spot. I can use this exit spot to exit the labyrinth, obviously. Um, but using this allows me to keep any treasures I've gathered up until this point. Um, I definitely don't want to leave. No way, man. We got we got stuff to do. Yeah. Um, but the difference between that and the retire function, which you're seeing on the lower screen, mm -hmm. um, retire, I would leave, and I wouldn't be able to keep any of my treasure. So um, You remember what green means. I do. We're bots. Here we go. Perpetual bosses. Oh, boy. Yeah, dun, so like dun, you were dun, saying, dun, there's kind of a risk-reward thing where if you're, if you're suffering in a labyrinth, you can hop onto the exit spot and take off mm -hmm. and keep what you got so far, but then you lose, you know, you the lose potential. out on whatever else is in there. Right. Exactly. And then in this room, this is a room with a booster. So right now, the booster is set to make my enemies stronger, which is... No, which is no. I don't want that. <laughs> so I'm going to hit it. Now the abilities have been um, powered up for us. Oh, and we've got some more alaguanas, which is awesome because I need their uh, their teeth. You're har harvesting their teeth. I am. Um, I mean, you but know, I don't not, want them to go to waste. But they're not dead. Yeah, they're no, they're not off. dead. Just yeah. some of their teeth fell out. Yeah. Uh, okay, and we're still going here. The oh. Chaos chest pops up again. That blasted chest. No. Took off. <laughs> Mira's still just like, uh, kill me. Okay. It's good though. She's staying off uh, away from the she's heat like, of battle. Uh oh. Now she's right in the oh. right in the throes. Up. Oh. All right. There we go. Nice. Cool. So I was able to defeat the chest before. Oh man, I've got a surplus. Look at that. Nice. That's great. That's cool. Way Couple spare for later. Um. Yeah. We're going back up here. Um, so uh, I haven't taken a moment yet um, to explain. People are probably noticing the um, flashing symbols below my HP, below my character profiles there. Mm -hmm. And um, those are actually um, my special moves. My, th those are my SP gauges. And I will showcase those um, during the boss battle. Um, oh, 
Lovely. So this is a nice room. Uh, I can actually heal in here, so Mira finally gets to stand up straight in a minute. Uh, but first, I got to clean up these piles of sand. They're bothering me. And I want to reiterate something that you said earlier, just because, like, now that we're deeper in the labyrinth, uh, kind of just want to like point out the way that these are generated randomly by the the slabs. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're doing some exploration here. You're finding your way around. But the next time you come into this dungeon using those slabs, it might be a different dungeon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and I'm going up. And the other cool thing that Kendra just showed here is that um, her main character was able to throw their ability to basically gust away the piles of sand, but mm -hmm. each character in your party has a different ability that might do something else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, thank you for pointing that out. Um, yeah, so the Lagora tribe, um, there are Lagora characters, and they have different special abilities. Oh my gosh, ouch. They, they seek revenge. <laughs> <laughs> They're like not happy about what I've done to their siblings. Um, yeah, so you have all these special abilities and um, from the different characters that will come into your oasis, and that actually allows you to solve puzzles throughout the desert, and it, it makes new areas accessible that you may not have been able to get to before. So there's some areas that you might even see toward the beginning of the game, and you'll be like, I have no idea how to get there, um, and you won't be able to get there until you recruit uh, people as residents and get them into your oasis. So it always helps to go back out, um, swap different party members, so then you can revisit a place and then use that party member skill in order to unlock something mm -hmm. or discover a new path. Exactly. Um, so just to recap for anybody who may be joining the stream late, we're in a labyrinth, um, randomly generated. Um, I've made the difficulty not too terribly hard, just for the sake of you know expediting the process so I can show you guys a lot of stuff. Um, Okay, I'm, I'm being, uh, I'm like, I want everything. Because uh, there, there's stuff hiding in the sand sometimes. Like, um, even though you know it's a demo, you're like, I, I still want to get everything. I mean, why <laughs> it's not? super important. Why not? Why not? Um, Could we'll be useful blue. later. I like yeah. blue. Um, well, we haven't done And that. each each room in the labyrinth um, has a different, uh, different thing going on, and it might have a puzzle, it might have a uh, treasure, it might have monsters. Um, eh. Do -do. Okay, uh, so this room has a bunch of switches. I don't know if I want to let you guys choose the switch again, though. Oh, really? Last Why time not? I did that. We're really good at choosing switches. Please. You are really good bad at it. I don't know. All right. Can which... I pick the button? Yeah, okay. You can pick the button, Teresa. That one. That one's <laughs> your The one right here? That one, right there. I fear. Okay. Press it. Oh, gosh. Was it a good one? Oh. No. Yes. Did you hear that horrible sound? That oh, was I'm a great one. Really that was happy about it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. It's more fun well, to showcase. Uh, I'm gonna be grabbing <laughs> this stuff you know? because I want to bring it back to my oasis. Press that one. Oh, <laughs> that I don't one think I'm one. gonna listen to you again. Oh, come on. No way, man. No way. <laughs> no. Look what you see. What you've done. You're bringing more friends to the party. They're Press not the my friends. No. I like this one. Uh, this is the one I like. I'm pressing it. Hey, I want to point out uh, to people oh. who are listening at home, like. The music in this game is amazing. Yeah, oh my gosh, yes. And the visual style as well. All of it has this like really consistent, really nice uh, kind of feel to the game. You can see it in the textures along the walls, in the music, and the choice of instrumentation. Oh yeah, yeah. the, the character, character design. design is so unique. Um, you know, this is brand new IP, and all the characters are just, I, I've never seen any characters like these ones. Um, and I love that each each character has, like Teresa was pointing out, each character has their own special skill, their own. They use different weapons. So the Drock uses spears. Um, the Circa use um, the giant hammer. Seedlings use seedlings. Actually, can use a few different types of weapons. I'm using a blade right now, but I could I could also use bolas or um, a crossbow. Um, here's another exit spot, um, but I'm not going to use it obviously. Um, and this is actually we're getting to the boss, and I'm. I'm nervous, guys. Uh, it's going to be fine. I'm a little bit nervous. Everybody's at peak health, almost maybe half peak health. <laughs> but um, but yeah, seriously, the music is so good in this game. I would love to get my hands on a soundtrack at some point somehow. Cause it's really fitting with the environment. So oh, that's yeah. what I like. It, it feels and very immersive. Yeah, it sets a oh, good totally. atmosphere. Yeah, mm -hmm. and obviously there are different areas with different music that also fits those varied areas. Exactly, it's so dynamic with whatever event gets triggered, so I like that a lot too. Hello. Okay, so I'm gonna do my best. Ooh. Oh gosh, okay, yep, oh wow. I'm gonna do my best and it's already like, no, it's all right. Okay, so now's a great time to use my SP ability. 
So I just boosted everybody in the party. Um, obviously, here's his weak point. Um, oh, gosh. Ah! Oh boy. Oh, that was yeah, a this big is, hit. So remember how I talked about wanting to save my heels? Yes. Yeah. Uh, this would oh, be yeah. why. This would Good be strategy. why. All right. So this particular boss, um, if you notice, uh, the Circa had a little music note and Mira had like a little bubble with a music note. I am so scared. Yeah, okay, right I need to stop being so fearful, but I've got to get my timing right here. Here, you find it. I'll, I'll finish that thought. <laughs> okay. So, like, if you look at the character profiles oh, along the left-hand side of the top screen, right. you'll see the little music note that pops up with a little scribbly cloud. Yep. That indicates that that character is strong against or weak against or not, you know, that, not powered against uh, him. So that hammer is really effective against the Scrimpion, and you can see his... Uh, his weak spot, yeah. which is that red orb on the back. Exactly. So that musical note above the character profile oh indicates, like, oh, this guy is strong against it's this enemy. Effective. Ah. Um, if I put my weapon weapon run, away, run, run. I'm, I'm, dude, I'm <laughs> oh trying, trust me. If I put my <laughs> weapon away, I'm able to run just a little bit faster, so... Um, yeah, you'll see me doing that. Oh, okay. Um, also, I have a strong attack and a slightly less strong attack. Um, one's faster, um, one's, one takes a little bit longer. Um, so you have, you have a few things at your disposal. What I really need to do, honestly, is switch over to um, Levi, the uh, Circa guy, and use his SP ability. Um, I'm just like, there we go, okay, I'm doing it. Yeah, and so the SP ability, you can see that you could trigger it by pressing the R button. Bam. Okay, did nice. you guys see that? So that was his SP ability, which obviously differed quite a lot from um, the main characters. Um, hers boosted us, and his is a physical attack. Um, but I have to make sure my aim is right, and it's like, it takes a minute to charge up. Bam. Oh my really gosh, but meaty. it does a lot. Of, did it? Ugh. Oh my gosh, nope, not fast enough. Um, also, I'm able to dodge. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen me dodging quite a lot. <laughs> and I'm so just like staying really far away from this guy because he scares me so much. I that SP ability, that, that uh, increases over go. time, but um, you don't have to wait to, like there's two bars for say the main character, uh -huh. but that doesn't mean that it's gonna be necessarily powerful. It's just twice that you can use that SP ability. Yeah, exactly. Um, also people will notice the little symbols below um, the scrimpy on there. Um, those are the type of monster that, that, that monster is and um, the that'll indicate type. yeah that'll indicate to me who's gonna be strong against it and who's gonna be less strong um, and you, you you sort that out as you start playing through the game um, but I really just want to take this guy out oh my gosh so um, obviously <laughs> obviously Almost. this boss is is quite a bit more challenging than um, the enemies that I was fighting earlier because um, because I wanted a challenge it's really cool how you're strategizing and using every character around you so like the, the guy with the hammer, he's he's pretty tanky, so he'll he moves slow, but he does a lot of damage. Exactly. Oh gosh, and I shouldn't oh, have done that. Really I shouldn't have done that. You're fine. You've got some. I got greedy. Left. I got greedy. Okay. <laughs> I love that he's doing that. Uh, oh, and we've got like new. The boss is doing some new moves now too. Like okay, I've seen know. actual scorpions do that with the the little pinchers out <laughs> right before he does. Like it's his cue for his big attack as he comes in to lunge. Mm -hmm. And okay, I love and all I'm of the ones where he's scrambling under the sand, too, or, like, oh jabbing gosh. his tail under the sand. Oh, my gosh. Oh! Ow! Oh, my gosh, and I'm poisoned. Okay. Oh, no, yeah. but we're so close. We are so close. I can taste victory. If I can just... If I, That's if just I the aftertaste just... of the poison. Um, but, yeah, so, so you... So, again, the labyrinth is side content. Oh, I'm able to go in here. Nice. I can make it difficult nice. if I want to. Um, and meanwhile, I'm solving a side quest or completing a side quest, and um, and just getting new puzzles and whatnot. The, the game has so much content; it's kind of insane. Uh, you can pour a lot of hours <laughs> into this game. Yeah, and now it's ad adorable, and it's going to go back to its uh, family. And I stole one of its claws. <laughs> I'm sure it shed that claw. It didn't need that claw. Yeah, you'll use it later. It's for a good reason. That understands. And I'm just going to use this because I feel like it. There's no real purpose there. <laughs> okay. And so now we're in the final room. And we get... What do we get? And so the treasures that you get in here, you're not going to get <laughs> elsewhere. Isn't it cute? I know. I love the way they all treasure. look into the treasure chest. Yeah. What did I get? Please tell me I got... Yes, I got the fairy clothes. Nice. Yay. Oh, I'm so happy. So yeah, um, I'm going to get treasures in the hieroglyph labyrinths that I'm not going to get elsewhere. So that also, um, for people who are completionists and are all about getting all the things, like avocado beef, I hope you guys all saw that. Mm. 
Did you Tasty. see that? I saw it scroll by. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but for those people who are, you know, really want to like level their oasis all the way up, get all the items, um, the labyrinths are where it's at. But you know, if you if you don't want to, you don't have to either. You can you can also just go through the main storyline. Um, oh, also, uh, you guys probably noticed that I'm on a save point, but it also allows me to warp to different areas, which is really handy because. Um, you just end up going to a ton of different areas, and um, and you visit them over and over again to get all of the things you need to level up your your bloom booths uh, for your villagers. Exactly. Um, so now that I've shown you guys, um, oh, and as we come back in, yes. um, we level up. Yeah. Nice. So all the the battling I do out in the fields, um, I am now reaping those benefits. Yeah, and that's just that's another interesting thing about this is you don't level up in the field; you level up when you get back. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, I, oh, another thing I'm able to do is while I'm in the Oasis, I can use fast travel because your Oasis, uh, you'll see, it starts to expand and get really um, pretty pretty large. Um, so here I am with Esna, the water spirit that I mentioned to you. I team up with her at the beginning. We build this Oasis. We want to make the world a better place together. Um, and right now we want to make our Oasis larger. So um, we're going to. Um, so yeah, as you as you gain residence, um, you're able to level up your oasis. And um, there we go. And you got that dude who loves books a few minutes ago. Yeah, and I had a bookshop, so he wanted to move in. But yeah, I just honestly, I really love. Um, I I've never played an RPG like this one, um, where we have we have a bit of um, you know we have the oasis that we're building upon. We have the bloom boost that we're leveling up. We go out and we have uh, dungeon crawling, puzzles to solve, um, battles to fight. You've got the main storyline, which is honestly really compelling. Um, I just got some new recipes. I, I, that's another thing. I can go into my tree house and I can synthesize my weapons and um, make new items. Um, I'm recruiting residents. I'm going to show you guys uh, what the garden looks like. We have a few more minutes and I just I just desperately want to show people <laughs> as much as possible. Um, oh, and if I talk to Isaac right now, you see he's got a little speech bubble. It's going pretty good, man. Thanks for asking. Um, so he just told me about um, a Lagora um, that's wandering around who may eventually come to my oasis, or maybe I can seek them out. And um, yeah, so. He's giving you the conditions under which this guy will move to your town. Exactly, yeah. Um, so here's my garden, which is already fairly expanded because we're a little bit deeper into the game here. Um, but I'm able to grow various things in the garden. And I can, um, I have seeds, and then I grow crops, and then I can stock the bloom booths with that. Um, to or, further or I can use, mm -hmm, Or I can use the stuff to, um, like, certain items I can synthesize and make in my treehouse. Um, so it's very, like, utilitarian. Yeah. Um, Anyway, I just... Uh, but it further expands that economy system that you were talk touched earlier and then right now where you're stocking up the stores, you're getting duodems, and those you can either buy more stuff or send Oops. your party out to new missions. Yeah, exactly. I didn't mean to go in here, but she's <laughs> like one of my favorite seedlings. She's super cute. But okay, bye, Evia. See you later. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm just going to kind of run around the oasis and show you guys a little bit what it looks like. This is um, a pretty built-up oasis now, so you're getting a look at... Like after a lot of work has gone into raising your bloom booths and moving, uh, moving people in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, this person has. Oh, and I think the exploration team is maybe not done yet. We can check on them though. See what their progress is. Nope, nope. nope they're still getting they're ready. Still, yeah, they're still getting all their gear. But once um, they come back, they'll level up too on their own. So you don't necessarily have to take them into an active party with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can send out those expedition teams and you can keep them leveling while you're actively leveling the people in your party, mm -hmm. which is really nice for, um, you know, depending upon how you play. I really like to keep everybody equally leveled as much as possible. So I love that functionality. Like, not only are they collecting stuff, but they're also. Um, they're also leveling up, as Teresa said. Yeah, it's always sad when you've got like this, your core party that you've really focused on, and they're all like super high level, but then you need to swap someone else in, and he comes in at level one, and you're like, oh, hey, hey yeah. buddy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I Come guess on. I have to help you. I help you up. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so it's nice um, that you can send them out, and then you can get them building up their experience and helping out your village as well, or your yeah. oasis, rather. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, so yeah, I think that's probably about all we have time for, but um, sh we got to showcase um, one of the Hieroglyph Labyrinth dungeons. Um, 
we got to show what the battle system looks like a bit, and then the Oasis management, um, super charming game, beautiful music, amazing art design, um, and I hope I hope everybody loves it as much as I do. Yeah, and, and we have forget. one more announcement. Oh, and we have a super cool announcement actually. Mm -hmm. um, at noon today, we have a demo available, um, a free demo available of Ever Oasis, so you can. Um, Pick You'll that be able up. To download and that at noon. -ish. Yeah, at the Nintendo eShop. I mean, yeah, noonish. Yeah. Ish. So uh, please, please check it out and um, have have fun with that. Yeah, I'm excited to try it yeah. out because yeah. I can't <laughs> wait for this game. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we have, but stay tuned. We have more exclusive content for Super Mario Odyssey. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>